Thank you so much for clicking on today's video. In today's video, we are going to be taking a look at Brad Taylor's video clip, and it's kind of been blowing up of lately. I want to um, let my audience know about this video clip that's kind of been going around the internet and has been kind of going viral, which is absolutely incredible, and hopefully it will keep going viral. I'm gonna go ahead and play the video for y'all to watch. His name is Brad Taylor and absolutely incredible kid. The funny thing is, is that I thought this video had just came out, right? And I start digging and digging and digging because I just need, I just want to find the raw video clip. Okay. And I will, um, I'll link the raw video clip down in the description down below. Um, because nobody else was doing that. So I'll do that for you. I kept digging and digging and digging and digging. I'm like, dude, like for this video that just popped out of nowhere and people were acting like it was very like new news or whatever. I'm like, I can't stink and find it, but I finally found it. And it was actually, um, this all happened July 14th, 2021. So a little over a year ago. And I thought that was kind of funny, but nevertheless, this kid is absolutely incredible. So I'm going to I'm going to give him the spotlight and uh, we're just going to sit back and listen to this kid talk. So here we go. Hi, my name is Brad Taylor and I just finished my freshman year at RHS. Um, I've been a part of District 196 schools now for 10 years and I'm going to give you a glimpse today of what's actually going on inside these schools. Um, despite the board's attempt to deny it, District 196 schools are quickly becoming a place where promoting activism is actually more important than promoting education. I'll take, you, I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me, or half the kids that were in the class. Now, members of the board, I know you haven't been to school in a while, and I know most of the peop I know none of you, or most of you, don't have any kids left in the school district. Um, but you must admit how uncomfortable it will be to be characterized just by your skin color on the first day of school and be thought that you were wrong just because of your skin color. So I will never forget the look one of my friends gave me from across the room as we were sitting there listening to this blatant bias being expressed in the so-called equity statement by the leader of our school. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. In another separate instance, I was told that writing all lives matter on the whiteboard was political and could be seen as offensive. When I questioned the teacher after class, she told me that she didn't have an answer and she just had to erase it and it was quickly erased. There are political signs all over RHS specific, about specific races that matter, specific sexual orientations that matter, and specific perspectives that matter. But when I questioned the RHS administration about how these signs were political, they told me that they were supporting human rights. So when I questioned why the equity statement couldn't represent all students, they told me that to even ask that question was outlandish and offensive. And they, when I asked why that was, they told me, quote, whites have a pretty good situation right now, unquote. So is that not racism? Disregarding my question merely because of the color of my skin. To be honest, after enduring a year of the people in charge telling me that I'm a racist and I'm privileged and pointing out our irreversible differences, I've never noticed race more. And it's becoming the first thing I notice when I meet someone, which has never before been the case. RHS administration confidently told me that RHS students and staff are happy with their equity statement. But from the, my experience in talking with other students, this is not the case. I know many kids who disagree with their teachers, but they're too scared to stand up because they're worried that their grades will be docked and their learning experience will be affected. My honors government teacher, I'm not going to say his name, but he's mentioned that Democrats care more about all people while Republicans only care about themselves. And he's also inferred to us that socialism is better than democracy. He even had a statue. He had a statue of a socialist leader in his classroom. Um, I have been... I've been told by a lot of kids that they just stay silent and adjust their schoolwork to reflect an acceptable opinion to secure a good grade. I've been approached by multiple teachers who have told me in private that they just want to say that they agree with me and they support me standing up, but they can't say it in front of the class for fear of being 
disciplined by the administration in some way or losing their jobs. There is clearly only one way to think in this district, and that is that they are teaching their kids to shut up if they don't agree. Now, members of the board, I want you to take a good look at yourselves in the mirror tonight and ask, are you really standing up for the equality of all people, or are you just pushing a damaging political ideology um, on, on our students? A fellow coworker at my job, who, by the way, is of color, discreetly told me that the schools seem to be pushing a very leftist agenda in class. This proved that not everyone is happy with your school, and not everyone who isn't happy is white. Now, due to all these instances I've mentioned and many more that I can't fit in this five-minute speech, I have decided to leave this district and continue school on a private Christian school online. And, and there will be sacrifices, and I will not get to walk in the graduation ceremony or attend milestones at RHS, but I will be able to learn in an environment that is not intent on punishing me daily for my skin color and political views. Now, regardless of how you take my speech, whether you just shrug it off as malarkey or Fox News talking points, <laughs> I encourage you to think about it, because someday I'm going to be a leader. I may be the president, a governor, or just a professional golfer, but I will never stop believing that everybody has value, no matter their skin color or personal beliefs, and it's a shame that you're not going to be able to say that I was an alumni of RHS in District 196. Thank you. Real quick, I just wanted to tell you about the TexasBoys.com. It's our little farm shop that our whole entire family runs. We pack up all the orders. And the amazing, beautiful thing about the TexasBoys.com is, is that we have our own amazing, wholesome, very, very healthy for you products, uh, unvaccinated honey, which is kind of funny about this article. And we have our own coffee line and several other different types of incredible products over at the texasboys.com um the beautiful thing is is that you're not just supporting us you're supporting another farmer coffee grower um beekeeper uh, out in our community so it's like a win-win you're killing two birds with uh, well kind of killing three birds with one stone you're you're buying a high quality product that will nourish your body then on top of that you're supporting this channel Panel so that we can keep doing what we love doing was telling y'all the truth and uh, the lies and corruption out there in this crazy world that we live in. And then also you're supporting another homesteader or like I said, another coffee roaster or a beekeeper out there. So I would love for you to go check that out and I'll let y'all get back to the video. Well, there you go, y'all. That is the video that's been circling around the interwebs and that young man, Brad, I don't know if you're watching, but if you're watching, um, you are way smarter than me. I'll say that. And uh, you got straight up guts, straight guts, dude. And you're one out of millions of kids that have absolutely no guts. And they're a bunch of TikTok freak left crazy stupid kids that just will shut up and go with the flow and congratulations for swimming upstream as a biological male <laughs> and fighting the good fight and it's awesome that he is leaving this school that is great that's what you know that's just what we need to do y'all and this is coming from another kid uh, this is coming from another young adult. I wanted to react to it because personally, as a younger person of the youth, <laughs> I absolutely love this and I admire this young man and um, absolutely incredible. He's only, um, well, now he's now he's 16. He was 15 when he made this speech. And nowadays, you just never see that in young people. Um, I always see so weak in um, immaturity and then to see somebody so mature and bold and he knows what he believes like and he has standards and um, he doesn't just bend to the will of um, these disgusting tyrants and for people there's actually people that are confused about this t-shirt here not today Schwab so um, I'm not wearing like um Schwab's face on my uh, shirt because I support him. 
I don't. So that's why it says, not today, Schwab. If you don't get the saying, uh, there's uh, t-shirts out there that say, not today, Satan. So, you know, it's kind of, it's a funny, okay, it's a funny. So anyway, absolutely incredible speech. He said it perfectly, beautifully. Everything the government does, whatever they say they're trying to do, take what they're saying and their real goal is the direct opposite of that. So they want everything to be inclusive, 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 inclusive. And then you go and write all lives matter on the chalkboard. And they're like, you're a racist, you're a white supremacist and white people are so much better than everybody else. And that's just so not true at all. And all lives do matter. And we are all created equal, you know, that, that just, that's the government. That is the government for you. And then also you got teachers in there that don't want to stand up because they don't want to lose their job, which is so silly too, because come on, like the teachers don't make that much money at all. Uh, I mean, mere pennies compared to what these other higher ups in the school boards and crap like that make. And they have to deal with all this garbage and personally, if I was an intelligent teacher, I would stink and quit. Or, even better yet, before you quit, speak out against this garbage. And if they fire, if they fire you, they fire you. But get fired because, <laughs> let them fire you because you are speaking out the truth. And I personally think more kids should just be standing up for their freedoms and um, just keep talking about this, keep spreading the news. Also, that's the other beautiful thing about being homeschooled, y'all. I've been a homeschooler all my life. Don't regret it. Absolutely so thankful for my parents homeschooling me my whole entire life. It's beyond too easy to be homeschooled in 2023. Like he said, he's going to go do an online Christian school. Yeah, I would too. Because all of, like, like he was saying, like he was saying, you're not learning anything there. All you're learning about is that you're white, you're disgusting, we don't need you, every other race matters except for you. You're disgusting, shut up, uh, get with the program. I have another young man just like this that I know, and he was in the public school indoctrination camp, as I like to say, which it is, and he just left because... Um, he said he would get, I made a video about this a month or so back, and he said that he might get 30 minutes of real education out of the whole entire day that he's there, and all the rest was absolute bogus, garbage, stupid stuff, just like this. Um, but then on top of all this, y'all, on top of all of this garbage that happens in all the schools, every dang single one Somebody comments on this video and says, not my school. That is a bunch of malarkey, garbage, bull duke, okay? Garbage. It's happening in every stinking cotton picking school. And I promise you, um, maybe not as, maybe not as much, but it's all there. It's all there creeping in, trying to destroy your child or children that you uh, have farmed out to the government. Um, anyway, back to his story. So he finally came home and told his mom, I have had enough in a respectable way. He said, I had enough. All the school teachers are all like weird and gross. And they're all with, they're all, it's all this drama between, you know, the other students and like dating and girlfriend and boyfriend crap. And it's all a bunch of drama and garbage. And you got, this kid, this poor kid didn't even touch on all of the disgustingness because he only had five minutes to talk, so he can't cover everything, but I'll cover it right here. So, you know, boys and girls going into each other's bathrooms, and y'all, it's so messed up. Don't think that it's just the boys going into the girls' bathrooms, so um, the deal is, is that it's both of them. The girls want to go into the boys' bathrooms. The boys want to go into the girls' bathrooms. And then there's boys changing in girls' locker rooms. And then there's girls changing in boys' locker rooms. And it's absolutely disgusting garbage. And to send your kid there, I don't know. Uh, we need to stand up for our freedoms. And 
Stop letting the government raise your kids. You wanted to have kids and God gave you kids to raise them. So stinking raise them. My friend that dropped out of public school and now he's homeschooling and everything like that. He was getting, he wanted to get his degree and stuff um, in plumbing and electrical and he totally dropped out. And um, y'all, I promise you 10,000 fold. Um, if he goes and becomes a apprentice to either electrical uh, company or business that does electrical or a plumbing company and just, you know, gets hired and just wants to be apprenticed for a couple years, he will learn 8,000 times more than being at some stupid trade school. Uh, absolutely. Um, because you're just, you're in the moment, you're on a job site working, fixing problems, problem solving for yourself. And it's absolutely incredible. And I just wanted to make this, in, I want to make this video to encourage you. Um, there's no excuses why you shouldn't have your kids home and homeschooling them. And I am talking to the bell curve. There are crazy, 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 both on both sides of the bell curve, but I'm talking about the bell curve and yeah, all schools. I will, I'll shoot. I'll say this straight up out loud and I don't care. Um, all schools are corrupt. Christian schools, uh, public schools, they're all corrupt. Um, like I said in the past, Christian schools, all they do is once in a while say God and crap like that in there. And that's all, it's all, there's all this, still all this garbage and drama. Trust me. I've been hearing all types of horrible, disgusting stuff that's been happening in our local Christian schools, and it will make you want to vomit. You, as a parent, if you are watching and you're screaming at me right now, you're an idiot, and you know nothing about this stuff, and my our teachers are the best in the world. First of all, you've never been there for like a full eight-hour day, okay? You haven't been there and sat down. And if you've been to public school, you're just lying to yourself because um, my mom and dad have been to public school and they've told me all the horror stories or most of them anyway. I'm glad they didn't tell me all of them because I know there's a lot. But just the bus ride to school is uh, has enough uh, horror stories. And just for the bus ride, for the sheer fact of the bus ride, I would not send my kids to public school or Christian school or whatever. Man, it's just, it gets me fired up. And I'm just absolutely so pleased with this young man standing up, saying all this disgusting crap that these lizards are trying to pump into these poor, innocent children's minds while they are still very supple and they're just want they want to absorb all of this knowledge because that's what they're surrounded by and that's what their friends are and now it's even getting worse where you know if you don't have the right narrative then you're going to get a a c minus or b minus or f or whatever fill in the blank um so you got to write the you have to write the right uh leftist narrative and uh, there you go so anyway and if people hate me for that good awesome and if you're offended great um you know i get a lot i watch a lot of the matt wall show and i absolutely um absolutely have mad respect for that guy i'm personally not a catholic but <laughs> even then even still i absolutely love just how man that guy's just a manly guy and absolutely love it and that guy has guts and I strive to have guts as much as him and this man, Brad Tyler, Taylor, Brad Taylor here. And uh, anyway, y'all love y'all so much. And if your kids are in the public school or in the private school or in the Christian school, uh, I would highly, highly recommend to think about and just highly consider the fact of bringing them home, bringing them home. Uh, just for your kids sheer if you don't want your kids to be transgender and like messed up for the rest of their life and god haters bring them home 
Oh boy, I lost a lot of subscribers. All right, love y'all. Bye-bye.